big one. And the Danes are set for potential 2-0. Train very, very promising. Second that vertigo. There's some history here. We saw Heroi get caught out by G2's approach last time. Oh, I'm excited to see some vertigo. I feel like I'm learning more and more and more every time I see this played at this level. It's so exciting. Gosh, it looks like the pace is going to be quite quick too, is the sound once again. How does that happen? Not nice here. shots from Kadian and... There's another double from Nico. Big shots indeed. Amanex in trouble. He's gone as well. And well, this one's already over. Poor Hunter. He was up short. He had teammates. And now that is firmly in the past. He's lost the bomb. He's lost his squad. He's potentially going to lose his life here. They tried to double peak and he's managed to get one and not lose any of his health. So certainly step one, big fat green tick in the box. Not a gold star worth though. <laughs> And the stars stay firmly on the sheet. Is there any other stickers you can if there's a, If there's a universe where he somehow jiggles this corner, one taps someone and no disappears. Way. Oh, no not, way. Not to be. That's a scary corner to turn. Now, uh, I think, you know, if you remember the last game we had Tessus, Alex, winning a very, very big clutch. We remember did. that clutch? We did. Now, he had impact in a lot of different areas uh, for the side of Heroic when they won in the overtime game within that uh, semi-final. Now, it was before that in the progression match where G2 got the better of them and the CT side was flat. So having this individual being able to find a lot of impact is going to be key. And one of the keys will be locking down the A play. We will just be seeing a light spread of deagles coming out here from the side of G2. Couple of G2 50s in um, well, and Excuse me? That's the man who I was talking about as a hero of the last. Can he do it and again? Stan was always such a little pillar of mid. Up the over? Yeah, but the timing doesn't favor him. He's got a chance to adjust. He knocks Head Hunter off his perch and then it comes around. It's Kadian with the nail gun. And that's the end of that one. Whew, okay. Well, quick start and conversion of the second. But yeah, keep your eyes on Stan, because throughout this, especially if he gets himself an AK-47, he fights mid so aggressively. Spot on, and have a nice day bottle is back out. Ah, uh, good point. So, Lord. just wanted to let you guys know, yeah. last time didn't go well for him. Incorrect bottle, now new bottle out. The correct uh, logo. Using and stay logo. hydrated. Of course. A Matic typeface, which is a sans serif How would you let someone type on your face? It's often uh, popularized by McDonald's, actually. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. They're loving it. Straight down. Oh, these flashes. This is mad aggressive. Look at the room they've garnered. Yeah, and now they just boost one up and rotate fully. Like, that's pretty much impossible to break. Yeah, that is the one spot in forklift room, now that there's no forklift, that you need to be on top of. But down. <laughs> Very lucky to get away. Oh, and so is Nico with the one done. He might incendiary on the platform. Okay, so they're locked in middle here. Jax has relieved a lot of pressure by finding Cadium to dunk onto Jax has kept things in favor of Heroic, despite this being the bonus round. You can see the spam ass SMGs. Look how oh. Shoot my head. I dare you. That's filthy. That is gross. <laughs> it reminds me of like Silent Hill, where it's got like the triangle head guy walking around. Oh, they're around. gonna get so mad. Oh, he knows it too. These are these are full AKs, full armor. Oh, oh. Dear. His life. Hunter just puts the bullets in the right place. Didn't need the headshots, apparently, and up they go. Yeah, okay, so there's a real chance now. I thought Tessus was good for one at bare minimum. Nade flying through into Almanex court. Down to 73, certainly softer, softer for Nico's dinks on that M4. The timing on this from Nico is everything. He's found a window. Yeah, it's the tiniest of windows. Look at that. Cool. It's crawling. And he should have a real chance to destabilize this attack now. 20 seconds. He knows he wants to opt for ramp and stop that plant. <gasps> okay, Kenny found. Amanek to plant, but unable to do so now with Nico's position. Hunter can't really save him. This is perfect from Heroic. Looks like three. Amanek yet to frag. 10 seconds. Hunter has relieved some pressure, but that bomb cannot go down. Seven, six. He will start it. Is he sticking? Oh, yeah, straight down. It's down and... Who's it, Borup? So long he takes the fight on Borup. That's very bold, but it's what you got to do. 2v2. It's down. I don't see the kit on him, but one just to the side. Hunter now left with it all to do. He made this possible by picking up that first kill to allow that plant to have any sort of validity. Smoke goes in. It's down, considering the short side. Hunter getting closer. 
Wants to check, wants to know, oh. knows too much. Stelm plays it incredibly well. Pulled the bluff nicely from Hunter. You had to cross her in the right place as well, but Stelm just too smart. Picks it up, double kill in the round as well. 3-0 start for Heroic. Let's recap how that starts. So this was where I thought Tessus had a good shot, but Hunter did incredibly well to react accordingly. Let's see it from his POV. What's he working with there? Got nothing. Yeah. No, so Hunter did a fantastic job. Uh, throughout that round, you can see just calling the bluff on the fake, and that's enough. Yeah, wow. Bring around the rosy right there. You were bang on, though, Alex. Tessa should have been good for one. So the fact that Hunter peels that away, oh, 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 that's uh, not troubling signs, but curious ones. The bomb will go down, which allows another buy to come through from the G2. Oh, that's a bit of a flub nade there from Stown. So probably not the end of the world. I was excited to learn a new one then. Not gonna, Not going to take that into our games later. All five in middle, so Nico needs to go large. And he's in charge for the first. Ooh. Aid not promising, but we'll perhaps get next to low, and he did. Oh, oh the double God. dunk. This is a painful world of hurt for the French as they try and lead through middle. That's it's nothing more than a, a deterrent. I can't imagine you're going to be making any calls that sounded like that one after the outcome here. <laughs> yeah, that's... That's painful. And look how, if, if they keep everyone alive here. Oh. Oh. Ah, there's flames, there's bullets. It's horrible. Let the man die. Yeah, let him die peacefully. Yeah. Jesus. Now, these first four rounds have been a different approach from G2. I want to show you the approach that happened last time round when we were in that overtime game. This is G2 running up the ramp here, throwing all the flashes, all the nades, all those bits and pieces. The smoke here coming in from Amanek. They even throw this Molotov. And this is how Tessas dealt with it last time, right? He just peels himself back, sits in the Molotov, burning away, and finds entries. So I think very soon, if G2 aren't finding the kills that they want to mid, to, uh, mid and B, it's yeah. going to be back to that approach over towards A. Okay, so that is definitely one in the playbook. Back to middle. I thought that would have been oh enough. God, not again. Oh, but he's caught out with the orb. Kadian surely can't get more than he one. Can't. He's saved by Nico. And that should oh, be the round. No. Another colossal nightmare. Oh, what a dream it was for G2. They hear the orb. They're like, perfect. We could just charge him down, getting his face tech nines up against it. Nico is just controlling middle. As Hunter now, your only one alive, a 1v5, no less. <sighs> Damage would be lovely, but, you know, you're going to have PTSD about walking out. That's the Tech here. 9, though, Lauren, isn't it? I kind of like that one. You know you're in the market for a Tech 9 skin. I've never found one that I really love. <laughs> I, you know, that's not floating your boat. It's nah. floating mine. I don't like yellow. Okay. Not about it. All right, so she's not a big fan. I'm kind of in support of that one. How do you feel about boats, Lauren? In what regard? Do you like them? Do you, do you like the nautical do adventures I... attached to boats? Uh, Have you been on a boat? Some people just yes. like boats. I'm just asking. Do, do you I like boats? Like, I quite like a boat. That's okay. all you were asking. Well, we want oh, we we a boat. We want a boat in Malta. Okay. With a yacht. Uh, let's not exaggerate, Chad. It makes it sound like fair. a very lavish lifestyle. Yeah, I, the last time I went on a proper boat, it was like with well, those racing ones, you have to turn around, but that aside, the a a big round, Casper, Cadian on charge, but didn't get much information. Oh, he spotted. Quickly. Oh my God, they're two here. Yeah, so this Wait, Molly... Did they see him? Yeah, I assume so, unless Jax was flashed too. Yeah, here comes the go. Molly. So if they smoke it and one leaves, this could be cool. So they... I don't, I assume Leech. they're going to have one of them. Oh, owie, nade, and a push into Hunter. This is perfect. They'll assume it's clear. Nico set for success. You don't, you don't, don't check assume. this again. No, do no, you? no, no. I think they've done enough here. They can probably just count on Nico controlling ramp eventually. kadian has got a whole lot of work to do if he wants to hold short, though. Oh, these steps are great for Nico, though. It means that he feels secure, at least in this position. He can hold it out for now. Kadian, as you're right, under oh. pressure! God damn, how is he able to get out of there? The smoke comes in. Nico, it's all oh. about timing here. There goes Kenny. You, you almost can't fall for short. it, can you? <laughs> he screams, care short. Yep. They run along the yep. close wall. Kadian's oh. hitting his shots. A very nice flick. Jack's burning close quarters. They know he's in there. Nico, all the way from Sandbags, contributes. This is another spicy maneuver from the heroic gang. The Danes continue to impress here. Great shot, oh. but... Nothing more. Three frags again. Ow. Look at his frags, ladies and gentlemen. Nico is on 14. Six rounds in. Oy. Well, that was the A approach that we just highlighted, right? And mm. uh, it got dealt with handedly and not in the way I was expecting. Oh, isn't that? Is cod. That is guilty looking, isn't it? Oh. That's my kind of M4. That's, that's like a juice. <laughs> oh. Wow, that uh, bit of motion sickness right there wow. for some people at home. Um.
Is this going to be pacey? I'm, I, I, I'm intrigued by the Ammonek Mac 10. Yeah, it's yeah. always a bit of a gamer. And... Oh, that hurts. But anymore where that came from? Oh, it always seems they come in pairs, these nades of Heroic. Now Borup steps up to the plate, spots just a glimmer from Kenny S. Yes, he's making lots of sound cues, trying to keep them paranoid. There's the second one. Go on. Oh, Ammonek dunked on to 28. The nade damage has been a nasty set of circumstances. They do start to walk and the walking wounded head back towards A. Just Tessa today with his org right now. And uh, if you're the guys of G2, you know at least there's one rotation pulled to B because of the extra grenade usage. So as they walk on up, they have one flash. Flash and go. It's on Jax's... Run boost, maybe. Potential, yeah. It would be good with the MAC-10. Great call. Flying through the air is an Amanek, and he's gone. Good following from Cadian. Goodness me. Doesn't quite achieve its goal if it's plucked out of the air. Now Cadian's going to be deagled down, and it does fall to Tess. It's been there the whole time, but oh. Kenny's hit another bang. Oh, oh, no. no. Oh. A series of unfortunate events. Why has he done that? What a blunder. <laughs> this is going to be a difficult round to get back into now. I can't, I can't bring it back. I'm afraid that, that dies with Henry. It's gone. Yeah, that it's gone. dies it's with Henry. Oh, Nico, though. Smoke onto the bomb. That's promising. Could be very difficult yeah. to hold. What are these post plants like for the T's? Ramp and sandbags. Or up tries to draw a little attention. Does. Kenny gives away position. Now they know where both of them are. The tape line and the Deagle sounding very different. He's sitting this one. Has to protect. Can't do it. Nice play from Hunter. Yeah, G2, of course, it's off the back of a quasi buy. They actually managed to pick that one up. The first round of their Vertigo T side. And it comes down to just a little bit of a missed shot after the initial exchange. Run boosting in. Amanek didn't get to achieve anything, but it was enough. Hunter with the frags. Hunter, I, I know that he only has five kills to his name right now, but he's looking more poised this time around than I remember last. Remember, it was like, oh, thanks yeah. to my teammates for carrying me and that, and that kind of stuff. Like, he's looking good at the moment, looking sharp at least. Kadian again, having a little look. Six to one scoreline wise is, is very promising for Heroic, of course. And as said, it, it's only fitting that G2 win it in such a fashion, but. We are seeing that tucked up player behind KD, and that's going to be a fun one if they do eventually go this way. I really like this setup. I, I think that because KD will shoot and fall away, they'll assume it's clear. Yeah, I see what you're saying. KD can even peek over his smoke if he's going to drop one for Tessus. It's on to the incendiary first and starts to relocate. Because this is Hunter's domain. If they take Hunter out, he's such a key factor. He's smoking the ramp. Katie's doing everything to set Tessus up for success here. Oh, Lord. Gets the frag he needed. Oh, and another potentially. Kenny's so low, they will not go down. Tessus just panicking, scroll wheel, everything. He's still away, still alive. And that's the early advantage they were looking for in this round. Oh, and now they boost. Now, as they return to ramp, they set themselves up a turret. And Nexa likely will check this. You can see that Nico's... Not going to show. Now he jumps for the info. Oh, this is frustrating for him. Will they check it? Oh, oh. Time's a problem. They've got all the information. They know everything here. Yeah, they fall off it because they just don't have the angle they needed. Kadian, what are you what? doing? Oh, unlucky. Turned away at the wrong time. That could Fine. be the way in. Yeah, 15 seconds. They could get that bomb down, Lauren. They can extend that clock right here, oh, right now. The God. frag from Nico's put the bomb loose. Nexa scrambling to save the day, and the bomb will go down with just a second to spare. Tags burning, Wait. and they take the round. Oh, G2, those narrow margins cost them. Uh, look, I, I just want to sing the praises of that Tesla and Cadian set up more. I, Hunter is such a pivotal individual on that scaffolding part of the map. When they take that area, they can leave him alone. Cadian again getting caught out. I, I swear we saw the setup in reverse uh, last time we watched these two teams play where Hunter or, or maybe it was Kenny got caught. I think so. Well, there's some dancing going on here. It was uh, top left and in the middle. They're all having a great time. And I would be if I was on the heroic side of things. Seven to one, timeout forced. G2 will be buying. Amanek, will he be opting for that MAC-10? Will he be opting for the AK? The strategy that they want to call will determine the purchase. And it's the double op setup on the other side of things for Kadian and Stown still in play. This is looking really good for Heroic right now. 
back and forth struggles that they had. Remember the overtimes? It was like three straight, and then the other team won three straight, and it, it was it was a, a real hard fought tug of war. Last two last time these two teams faced. Ramanek has gone for the Mac 10, which will allow him to buy the utility. Interesting as well, Chad. Did you notice that Nex had two straws for his coffee there? Did. Because he's always got a backup plan. You know, he's always got something else uh, to call on that T side. And that's oh. the Kenny Go Kill strat working out perfectly. Cadian gone, leaping into the angle. <laughs> guess this has got a oh, bloody huge amount of work to I don't know what he's expecting here. Uh oh, uh oh, flashed, executed, and already a real problem here for Heroic. It starts strong for G2. Right, Molly's smokes, here we go. Bore up. Only one in any sort of position, but look at this utility. It's forcing them away, isolates the play up. Nico does come up with the goods though. They will hold on for now. They got Molly to stop the plan. Nico's holding on to that. Stanton's got the nade as well, so they really want to just contest this bomb plant without using their bodies. Makes perfect sense. I think they believe they've fallen away because of just how slow and posture this has been. He uses his incendiary alternatively just to flush Kenny out of the line so they can take a different duel. This is brilliant. Bomb's loose. 40 seconds. Need a frag from oh Nexa. God. Doesn't get it. Looks like they're actually turning this one around, Lauren. The bomb's yet to be planted. There is still time. They can take it. Nico drops his smoke and a nade on top of the nose of Hunter. What is Damn, that hurts. Still have to do the damage though, and that's exactly the way it begins. But Hunter now, the 1v2, around he goes. Stounds on the bomb. Doesn't look like he's leaving it anytime soon. The spray is excellent from Hunter. But Nico is there, and it's a brilliant playback through. Trade is much better. That is fantastic work from Heroic here. And the fact that they wanted to take the fight before the bomb went down, we know how difficult it can be to play retake on a map like Vertigo. But even just... He lost the first two frags, Yeah, Chad. it doesn't make any sense. The way that Borup gets away with those two kills, that's what I thought G2 were waiting for. Weren't they just standing around waiting for the push? Isn't that exactly what they were hoping to happen? And then now another round ripped away, a round that probably should have been G2s. Here's a list of nades we just saw Heroic throw in that one retake alone. We had stop Molly for plant, nade for plant, Molly from snipers to sandbags, smoke from snipers to bomb plant. They had everything they needed to safely set up for a retake and it worked wonderfully. Here's test is to be tested appropriately. Look how far Jax is yeah, already. I can't believe how wide he is. God, this is a gap. He's managed to find a huge one and now, well, the plan has been rumbled and the utility starts to land. Kenny, three frags to his name, it's peculiar, but he's added a fourth right now. Oh, it's down from above, trying to do some damage to slow the roll, but again, the bomb just about able to go down. See how many nades or what have you gets put down to this. Good nade, next to lower. Still need so much more though. So this is the smoke they've been throwing. If you want the retake smoke, there you are. I'll be a save here. Sorry to uh, spoil the party. But I don't think uh, Heroic have enough money to go for this one. Are they, are they actually going for it? They're having a look at least. Oh, they're, they're in. They're in there like swimwear. It's, it's not gone very well for them. They gave it a go. Yeah. I see what you're saying, Chadney, because yeah. yeah, that puts them into an awkward situation where you're like, do you, do you, do you want to double Lico or do you want to buy <laughs> some bits and bobs? They should do the bits and bobs. They yeah, sure, sure, sure. But now, like, the point you were proving was that it might have been safer to save your, yeah. your Ghiblis and have a better go into this one. Nika has 20 kills. <laughs> he does. Yeah, we are only 10 rounds in. That's an average of two kills per round. Oh dear, okay. Well, if G2 lose this one, that's catastrophic and we might see the half quickly trickle away from them. But if they can win right now, stabilize, there's a chance for them to build a bit of a base. Base, base, buttery biscuit. Base. They've missed a couple of nades over towards that B side of things, but it's not the end of the world because the only one home is Cadian, throwing out one of his own. Just be doing a, a lick of damage, a sprinkling, peppering. If Tessus wins this duel, I reckon Heroic win this fight, win right. this round. Okay. Because Hunter's always in scaff, right? Tessus ha knows that. We know that. Borup knows that. Everyone's aware of where Hunter likes to sit. It's this spot right here, and then he shoots your head off while you're getting inquisitive. A little underhand nade, a little. Ooh, oh, 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 he spotted him. Oh! And now, that's a lot of space. That's an AK. And they can leave Tessus to keep A under lock and key should they go B. 
There will be more players there. Boosted up is Amanek. There they go. Look at them all flooding around. Just spot on. They could be in the right place. This Katie is so blind. Oh. Amanek bulldozes into the site, though. You can't do much about that. All the finesse, all the concepts that could have worked well. And what it boils down to is Tessa's backing away with the rifle. Yeah, damn, that was lovely from Amanek. And that, th this is, you know, one of the best examples of why you're seeing, and Heroic have been doing it too, using those MAC-10s regardless of the money in the bank, just because of the amount of space you can generate. Uh, and, and off the back of a flash, you saw that that one flash bang enabled Amanek to be so pushed up. And he's even going to get a fourth as well. That's a great round from Hamanek. He invests just over $1,000, and he manages to triple, if not quadruple that, and pick up an AK for free. So that's a magnificent round. And this is where we talked about, Chad, if they were to convert, which they have, this is where G2 can really start doing some damage control with this first half. Indeed. And, and now, at this point, it should be the eco coming through from Heroic. They will get the $1,900 loss bonus, which does not warrant a buy in Chad Birchall's Counter-Strike. Cool. Cool? School? Cool. It's the coolest school with the hip kids. We got the G2 boys. We'll see ADR, by the way, when we get a sec for uh, Nico. Uh, it's, it's pretty Rush, ridiculous, go to, right? Go to Nico for us, Rush. There you go, 181. <laughs> it's not even like kill stealing. You can't even say that it's oh. not like putting up the actual numbers. That's that's beefy. That's the nade. Oh, it's not going to do too much. They're going for some CT aggression here. They do charge down the stairs. Amanek caught out. They'll expect Nexer or Jax or maybe they're just happy with that. Yeah, timing's great. No more to be had. So a nice finish from G2. Quick conversion. Everybody's happy in the Samurai camp. Round 13 ahead of us. And we have seen G2's posting of those four over the course of the last six rounds. So it's time for that turnaround to manifest. Probably due a timeout here as well at Heroic because the situation as it stands is not a buy with all the goodies. They won't have all the utility to stop it in case it is a rush. They need to work on where we're going to position ourselves in case of what reaction. So what are we predicting G2 to do? Now, we need to make sure, I'm talking from the Heroic standpoint here, that they have contingencies in place. If they decide, oh, we want to go close towards a ramp so that if they drop all their nades and flashes, that we can actually deal with that. But maybe they go slow or maybe they fake it. So if there's nobody home, what's the next step? Are we playing retake B? Are we playing aggressive mid? Where are we wanting to post up our buy? As you can see here, as they are slowly starting to go on their little shopping spree, spree fill their trolleys, we've got two Famuses. Did you have supermarket sweep in Australia? Uh, I think I probably know. It was a thing that was timed and you had to run around and grab yeah. as much as you can. Yeah, I, I, we, I don't know if we had it. I just know the concept. You know of it. Yeah. I see. Global presence, of course. Looks like their answers. <laughs> ah, I'm loving the the whole entire Amanek playbook at the moment. It does revolve around that Mag 10. Closest we've come, Lauren, to the AK 74U players of yesteryear. It's got too much of a brain. All right? Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's too much intention and thought to it. Molly up, four up, out of position. I I, I want to see how they utilize Amanek here. I like the smoky throw to kind of separate them, but I'm stuck. He is screwed. And Amanex again opened up the site. <laughs> oh, both of them. What? Yeah, I'm telling you. Master of the Mac 10, the Amanex 10. And now already he's made so much space. Like they can put their AKs up. The turrets are established. Kadeen can't do anything but say save repeatedly. Nico's frag onto Hunter is only going to confirm that the Lurk is free. Ooh. Very easily yeah. eight seven Hold half. On. Yeah. There's no kid in play though. Okay, okay. They shouldn't go for it. They're, they're looking though. Uh -huh. they're, 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 there's a lot. Uh, yeah. Bit of cautious to their play. So Chad, I, I'd say you're a CS purist. How do you feel about the bounding SMGs and? I don't mind it. I, I, look, it? I think the the idea is it, it's obviously only powerful if you're using the weapon in certain circumstances Correct. correctly, right? And and that was uh, what Valve communicated quite early when we were back in the majors that they wanted to try and make as many guns as possible viable. Now. I think Counter-Strike players do things in a very black and white fashion. When they hear viable, they assume they want every gun just to be equal. Well, that's obviously not the case, right? You know, we have guns with different kill values, uh, obviously ranges, damage, etc. And the MAC-10s and MP9s, we're seeing, uh, like these days, I might have to start changing my terminology because a full buy for me would be AWP, four rifles, full set of utility, armor, and diffuse kit. But a full buy in, in modern Counter-Strike can include MAC-10s, can include MP9s, can include shotguns. It doesn't feel as great for me to say it as a full buy, but it's potent and it definitely can work. These players know how to get the most out of their weaponry. Back over to A we go, and Tessus only has four kills. I said he was going to be a factor in defending this A side of things. 
And he has another duel with Hunter lined up. The Nutmeg coming through. And Hunter, using the smoke to his advantage, will find another big opening towards A. Yeah, we're really cooking with gas for Hunter now. This is where he does his best work. Once he's in the short position, he can just park it. He's gonna get flashed in. Cadian should have a good frag here. Freebie, Whew, spray from Hunter did good damage. Yeah, amazed he did so much, because he was turned at one point, so very impressive to come back and still do it, clearing through all the necessities that he's... Ouch, these nades from Heroic oh. are so frustrating. Oh. Wallbang hitting, it's down low, as is Cadian. Ooh, full Molotov short. Smoke as well. Bomb going. Upwards now. And into the side. That's nice from Jax. It should enable the plant. No, I think to contest it. Four versus two. Borup burning. And looks like this might be another G2 round. It's exactly what you called, Chad. As soon as you saw that <sighs> attempt at the retake, it was heroic kind of signing their own death warrant for their CT economy. Yeah, and everything was going their way. So I can imagine the confidence wasn't an all-time high, but... Maybe that's where if Hundum was here in the coaching chair, he would say, hey, 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 reconsider what we're about to do. Yeah. The ramifications of this are huge, and you're seeing them here. We are on track for an 8 7 half. This was uh, something that Heroic should be blistering in. They could have looked to potentially close out with 10. Now, 8's still great. They've won the half on what we consider a T sided map. So, thumbs up. Graham Pitt's happy. <laughs> Realistically, I don't want to say it was squandered. G2 have had to battle for these rounds. Regardless, but Heroic did put them himself in the best position to do so. Just some of that spam damage. It used to be such a nuisance when it was just wood. The North Americans, like you'd watch Liquid do it, they'd just all be put in damage down range, getting multiple kills through there before they're even entering into the bomb sites. So this is it. Heroic's chance to get a 9 6 or G2's to get a 7 8. God, they do sound so varied. <laughs> And let's uh, see how it you know, pans out at the end of it. It looks quite quick here. Alex, the flash down. Borup's getting involved. Up close, personal test. This dies. Do they find the second? Yes. <laughs> it's all for free. Oh, it's a disaster for Heroic. I like the idea, but Jax is just so prepared for it. His spray, his prepared fire onto Stown to finish the third round now, surely to follow. Poor old Cadian. Wondering where it all went wrong. And what a slew of rounds. My God, we went from was eight to one, and now eight to seven. It's quite a way to seal the deal, isn't it, from G2? They've cracked it, and this is what you were talking a little bit about. What can he do? There's yeah. no way in. No, he knows. A shot through the smoke, maybe wildly connecting, catching Nexus Hunt. No, not going to be. Uh, and that's G2 reminding us who they are. It's their map pick, and they've shown us why. It's eight to seven.
Late seven half, G2 really stabilized in the second half of our first half of our third map. Uh, second map even, makes more sense. Lauren and Chad are hanging out with me. That's down on your screens. Cadian in-game leader, gonna have to do a lot more heavy lifting in the absence of their coach. Hunden stepping down for a year. If you've been keeping track of the news. And now an 8-7, really just split down the middle. It will come down to heroic on this T-side pistol to start the momentum back in their favor, making no secret of their advance up the bridge. And oh, the jump peak um, <laughs> loses his head. Oh, good lordy. That was a pacey start. Hunter didn't even stand a chance. And we still got the nades, the flash, the smoke. All of this was still in play here. Two Double nades. Double nades. Yeah. Where does it go? I'm very curious about this. Imagine just dunking on that headshot box player. Kenny S is there. Smoke deployed from elevator for the retake. Bomb down now. They're talking about it. And through the smoke comes next. To, oh, it's quick. They weren't ready for it. Struggling to connect the shots is Borup. He's going to get forced off. Oh, was home for the nades. Nobody. And now Sitting two at... of them unarmored and oh. the defuse is coming in from Jack. So distracted. G2 perfectly executed retake. They let them believe they had the chaos. And it was G2 that had control this whole time. So last time I believe Her Heroic actually pushed through that smoke. They, you remember they did that short smoke that landed onto the left-hand side of the side if you're looking at it from a T-side perspective. And they pushed through and they took the fight towards Elevator. And G2 were, were aware of that. You could see that they were spamming the smoke a little bit more. They were getting prepared. And Heroic will actually be taking a timeout after losing the pistol. We can see that Borup has an AK-47 in his hands. Not sure if he's going to keep that because he didn't have head armor. But they're talking through their options right here. Maybe just having a chance to breathe and let it all sink on in. Katie and calling the last little shots before they get back underway. With that plant, they might consider a force buy. And I would say the AK-47 coming out would not be the only weapon that will be upgraded into. Big discussions here. Looks like we're on an episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or something. It was everyone. very tense. Yeah, so it's two AKs. Burrup doesn't have that head armor. That is worrisome for me. Deagles for everybody else. And good damage onto Jax early. Oh, how are they getting that for free? Flashing him off, he's fallen away. He's safe now, but... He took so much damage just falling away from that. Amid being fought back for, they're not giving it away for free. Kenny's still interested in what it could maybe garner. And honestly, the regress could be quite good. It would get them the information that, well, it's actually completely clear, as you can see where the T's are now. Whoop. That progression smoke. Great incendiary. Stops anyone walking up on the close wall when... That smoke is deployed. There's nobody really watching mid right now for G2. So there's a heavy lean towards the B side of things, and maybe that was through the execute, which I was highlighting in the pregame to do with Nico. Hamanek pushing forward. Big info play on the cards right now. Could definitely swing and get a couple. Him. Yeah, he's got a smoker for the one way. That works too. Hamanek will be able to shoot at them, track them with their toes. He'll have to get off the beam though in order to benefit from it. Well, the intent here is the pace is very halted. Amanek so close by to this too, bear in mind. But will the run boost work? Here we go. Across he goes. Oh, oh where did he go? Absolutely beautiful air strafe. Puts Tess in a good spot, but the bombs yet to be planted. Look at Kenny. Around the back we go. Goodbye, Katie. And how many more can he do? Nico should be the next in line. Not subtle about it, but... There you go. That's what you get for spraying in so wildly. Yeah, a bit of a punishment from Nico, but with seven seconds left, this round is not his. He's to die. Oh, holding on to AK works too. Poof. Okay. Well, get it off the map. That's pretty baller. Nexa can't save it. Stuck with an MP9 by virtue of the knockoff. Very cool. Circle jump. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Not just going wide. Actually giving himself a chance to survive and. Nico, look at him go, 24. Very, very promising player. Very excited to see more from Nico as his career continues to develop. The bathroom mobile phone gamer there. Guitar man's back out. But to force again. Oh, heroic, this is such a slippery slope. Oh, a close scoreline feels like he could fall away so quickly on these. 
definitely not out of the realms of possibility. Oh, well, they're going for the play, so. The play. It's not Nico being boosted up this time. He's got a more important job. He needs to clear off the cat. Oh, he's in the backpack. Oh, he has Nico still it. gets the frag. Peculiar. Kenny. Needs a bit more here. And Tessis oh. is having none of it. Deep smoke possible. I'm not sure if he caught a glimpse of Jax, but it seems he has, because the bullets are thrown his way. And the B hit. It's down, oh. beheading oh. Hunter as he mantled. And now it's Tessis stepping up to the mantle. Amanek has gone. And that will be nine to nine. Needed that clean as well. So perhaps we have got a game on our hands after all. Yeah, and I, I, I cannot believe that Nexus didn't convert that. That opening frag, we'll get it from Nico's perspective. Able to weather the storm right there, and then Tessus was basically saying, no, no, this is our bomb site. It's a very similar strategy to what we saw them do last time they played. Stown is always going for that mid lurk and being a nuisance as they rotate over the construction position. And you can see what that means. So, Cadian, it is a big round to win. Yeah, he knows. He knows all too well. Oh, Nexa has four. He has. Oh, wait. Yeah. Ooh. So I assume that now that they're taking the timeout, maybe that wasn't necessarily what they wanted to get away with. Malik from the coaching chair might have something to say about this. With two people on 1540, I mean, this is where we talked about, we saw Heroic in a very similar situation and they, they bought in and... It's just much earlier in the half. Much earlier in the half. So I, I'm curious as to see... Looks like it might just be the lone wolf next. Do you just like gamble stack with your pistols and throw an SMG into a B defense, like up close, maybe you can get a fast flank and... Hope for the best. It does seem like it will be just Nexa with the full investment of an MP9 and a Kevin Oh, vest. oh wait. The I last don't... second buy. Oh, this doesn't right. feel good, does it? Well, maybe they were keeping us on our toes, and they definitely <laughs> did that. So maybe. let's see what they could do with this. There's enough to work with. There's enough oh, to make yes. it interesting. Great nade. Ooh, oh, runs right on his helmet. Kadian down to 17, shell-shocked. Might want to give his weapon to Nico. He's been so good. Got plenty more health where that came from. Tucks away. Would love to see the weapon swap, but it's only against the pistols. And Cadian down to eight now after the lick of flame. Ah, uh, that works too. That works too. But with such low health, it's going to be an interesting one as to whether Nexus flank will be prepared for that. I'm not sure if he'll clear it in the same way as what we saw Hunter do in the first half. It's just such an odd angle. But Nexus playing to contain. What is the perp? Okay, that's, this is the purpose. Get up you. on the railing here if they would like. Just a smoke to play around when you know there's going to be some headshot deagle angles. And they're not in a rush here. The flank's held. They can, for lack of a better word, chill. Yeah, that minute it's only going to help. You can see those flashes. Smokes go up. They do create the avenue of approach towards the bomb site. So bomb could be planted soon. Nice tag, though, towards Nico there. That's going to certainly help matters late game. Go on. Flash comes in. Oh! In, nicely done by Stown. Sitting anti-flash potentially, not even sure, but he turned it just the right time. Now Nexa has had success on ramp, but he fell to bore up, leaving it all in the hands of Jax. That was on him. Oh, oh, okay. Everyone can calm down. Stown, three. And heroic, ten. So, double digits are found. It is by a Nance wing. The stamp is going to be six. Stown tip. Look at that. <laughs> what? <laughs> It's like he started pressing mouse one as he's flicked his mouse. That yeah. was wild. Yeah, yeah. Well, now G2, they will have to take a save. Respect it a little bit more. So Deagle on Jax. Deagle for Nexa. Flash smoke. Two more flashes in Ammonex's hands. They worked as a team there, and they, they gave it the best shot that they possibly could. I did not expect to see Stown doing as much as he did. And, well, he's back again, isn't he? Stown not clowning around here today. Grabs two big kills on the mid push. Should be set for 11 here. Looks like it's on track for it. With Jackson and Amanek, the only two alive, and nothing really to report. Cadian <laughs> being drawn around the houses. And he goes. <laughs> Jack's just got Tessus. This is a bit of a problem. Cadian doesn't like this. He wanted this much cleaner. He's kept control of it for now. Jax is the only one still there. Didn't really get much out of it himself and found by Stown. So what is, it? is that three in a row now? I do believe so. And one of the dramas is I don't think I have to put this full screen. I don't think Kenny has enough for an AWP. He doesn't. So Jax, Jax has actually bought him. it. And look what that does for Jax's buy. He gets dropped an M4 and can only buy Kevlar. So Jax has no nades. Kenny has a couple. Nexa has a Why smoke. Not? Single incendiary. Amanet could buy one and uh, two flashes. He could buy one and a smoke. 
but that's all they're going to have to defend with. So he's gone for the smoke, flash, flash, HE. He hasn't gone for the incendiary whatsoever. And we're starting to get to the business end of this game. If G2 don't convert this one, they're in a real bit of bother and a real bit of strife. Crikey. <laughs> you just go and follow Australian for us. Yeah, I so. know, sometimes the more the more I talk, the more it comes out. He knows, it brings, them, he knows it brings them around back, you know. Does it? Yeah, of course. If I hear a crikey out of Chad. Crikey. Bloody hell, that's Say that's not a knife. That's not a knife. This, this is a knife. Is your wife. Like See, that. you've played Knifey Spoonie before. Oh, I love it. Here we go. We're back underway. G2 need this. If you want them to tip the scales back in their favor here, this is a round to kind of instigate, propagate all of it to come through. And that's the start. Remember, roll your mind back to how much of a nuisance this man was over on ramp. He was in their face constantly, pushing down, getting away with it. This time, not the case. Falls away after doing that initial damage. Yeah, and, I, and you can see Barb has actually done great work to deny or to reclaim that territory. He's being very loud about this. That swing, it's only an SMG. Hunter can't contest. Oh. Great. Yeah, bold is a perfect word for it. And so now this potential plan. Look at this. This is very lackadaisical from Heroic, but it's working. Oh, Amanek yeah. burns. And that's the equalizer. Not how they planned to get it, but Stown sticking around, flashed in. They want to set him up for success. What's the plan here? Why is two of them so ready to fight, so ready to brawl? They're all coming from Elevator. Nico's trying to bait the retreat. Smokes, flashes. Oh, that's a good flash. Advantage G2. Jax extends it even further. Cadian and Borok quickly return. And now we need to see that bomb defused. Hunter's got the intentions. He's got the, all the equipment he needs as well. Five seconds on that defuse. Four, three, two. Booty visible. Oh. Borob collects. Oh. It's little buttocks. Hunter's been doing far too many squats. Sticking out from the smoke. Like a peach. That approach right there from Heroic is the way that G2 can approach a ramp. That's what they do with Hunter. They have Hunter just go up at whatever pace he wants and find jewels. And Borup did exactly that. You can see how much pressure that applied to G2 here. Utility was good. Flashes were good. They get the openings. They're able to get themselves onto the site. But then mopped up. And away we go. Now the problems, look at them. This is for 13. It's just pistols again. Oh, this is that brutal CT economy punishment for a couple of those risks taken early. You can see that same Molotov Amanek was chucking out. Seems teams have found a way to deal with the close wall very quickly. And what is Amanek up to? Oh, it's a double kill. He's even picked up an AK. It could be three. Amanek just decides this round is his. Sorry, I don't care about the pistols armor. I've decided I'm going to destroy a full buy. Just on my lonesome, using that smoke to great success, and that is going to have huge echoes throughout the server. Oh, nice. Nico's got space. And if Kadian can survive long enough, that bomb retrieval may not be impossible. Gosh, okay, hang on. Let's let's piece this one together, folks. Where is the bomb? Yeah, that's okay. a good question. I see Sorry, on I find ground. it hard to see on the map. It's not visible right now on the map. Mm, okay, Jax did find Nico, so I guess the potential has dwindled. Here. Yeah, that was their chance. I think the reason we can't see the bombs is because it's right on the cusp where the radars change from lower to upper, but Kadian, he just needs kills. He doesn't even need the win at this point. Just deny them from getting four free rifles. Oh, you need these to land. That's and, amazing. I mean, Amanek, I am. I would love to see the amount of kills he gets towards ramp compared to any other player. He is just, he's the beast of this area, completely and utterly. Got Tessa Spore up and down, all completely caught off. So, Lauren, we call the uh, auto shotgun the alligator. Right. And I like to call the 5 7 the snapping turtle. So, we've got to do a logical theme. You see, did you, do you see any uh, relation to a snapping <laughs> turtle <laughs> just there and those, those two little kills? I don't really look at them that much. Well, you will next time. Okay. <laughs> Never seen a snapping turtle in action? Don't they get massive or am I thinking of something else? Here he is again. Perfect nade into the toes. Oh! Jesus! Just over 150 damage. No worries. 10 pin bowling. He's got a strike. It's not how maths works, is it? Wait. 60, 60, 120, 10, 130. Okay. Slight exaggeration. Yeah, no one would have called you, called you out on it. No, but I want to call myself out. All right. Clearly, lots of people are listening and looking. Something to complain about. This is starting to look rough for Heroic. All that damage early means if they get harassed by more grenades here as they try and set up to, for an A hit, they might be in trouble. I mean, they might get flashed in again. They really want him to play spoiler throughout. They've been doing this strategy. They love it. Smoke him next to the one way. Typically, you'd assume that would make no sense. You're smoking off your teammate, but he likes to play by it and hope that they start to swing around the smoke. It's then the element of surprise that he can catch them out off guard with. 
And here we go, folks. Last 40 seconds of play. Flash for Amanek. Have a look. And execute. Nearly oh. two. Nico's done well to claw that back. Nico was on 20 kills in 10 rounds, right? Yeah. Not been able to replicate. Oh, what? What? Town gets Wait, away what? with one HP. Where did you hit on someone to hit one HP? It must have just been through the floorboards. Like, I think he crouched as he shot just through the box. I'm not sure. Bloody Peculiar, hell. though, because Stan really should be dead. 18 seconds as they try and pivot back to A. Okay, this round is as good as over. 13 seconds. What do you do? What do you do? Nothing is the answer. Save the AWP. Maybe if Kadian can grab it and get away, he needs to find himself around the corner. Three, two, one. He will do so. The chase will not be on from G2. And the money situation now for Heroic is enough for three players to buy rifles. That's mean Kadian will have to drop an AK over, and then either Bow Up or Stown will have to take an omission with maybe a MAC-10 or a Deagle, a pistol, something along those lines. Okay. Can I ask you something? Yes. Haven't we already seen this story before where Amonek's just been battering them time and time again on ramp? They eventually switch. <laughs> I don't get it. That was a very weird noise. I just Sorry. heard you unmuted your mic. It was great. Halfway through. Um, but then they had to turn up and go to the other bomb site, basically. Yes. Uh, the problem is there's a different setup on the other bomb site coming in from G2. This what, time Amanek? Do it again. Listen and repeat. Yeah, no worries, boys. It's Amanek. It's Vertigo. It's A-Ramp. Lauren's onto a winner with that. He certainly does seem to be demanding respect there. No Molotov this time from Nico. And if he pokes his head up, Kenny's there to support. Boop. Ooh. Yeah. That kind of uh, sounds the bell here. And that rings the dinner bell that, hey, look, we're over towards B. You can come and fight us. Next, I might jump up on a pop flash from Kenny at some point soon. This one uh, is going to quickly fall out of favor for Heroic. And well, with that in mind, at 12-12, G2 are the ones who are taking the lead as far as control of the game goes. Maybe not in the score line, but in the pace that's being set in the opening frags, in the duels that are being dictated. This would be a huge round for Stan and Kadian to get back into, but I just don't see a way. Flashed off. Oh, whiff, whiff. Oh, it's not pretty, is it? Kadian's dead from above or below. Getting hunted. Got oh, it. quick lock. Needs another one for me to get interested in. X is in such a prime <laughs> position. And bending over backwards to relate. 12-12. You can see that we do reach a level score, but as Chad is insinuating, the power has shifted over to G2's court. There's the backup plan behind Next up. So 2,900 loss bonus on the side of things for Heroic. This was that way this one started. It's wild he gets the second with like the running spray transfer. And that was basically the round when Nico died. So you can see a partial investment coming in from Heroic here. Made damage over towards B yet again. He hasn't had to move a muscle. Like, he doesn't have to get creative with his positions. Oh, dear. Amonex once again inflicted. I'd love to check his utility damage. I'll have a look. Oh, that's a little sketchy. Hunter oh, caught out. Amonex needs to save him. Oh. Oh. What is this? Pops the head off down. Maybe a fourth. There it is. Amonex has come alive in the CT side of Vertigo and gets an AK for his troubles. Stealing himself, isn't don't he? Don't go ramp. Please don't go ramp. Stealing himself. Go anywhere but ramp. I think we might see a mid approach coming through from Rohoic a little bit more so. Just have somebody patrolling to the bottom of the fork. You need somebody there because remember, Amanek in the previous game we watched would take control of that with a flash and he was winning duels against Tessas on a regular basis. So they need to make sure they keep hold of forklift room if they do want to go back to A at any point within uh, the round. But maybe an approach more... Oh, well, no, it's back towards A. They're not giving up on this. Let's see. Can Amanek deliver once more? Oh, it's, of course he can. I believe in him every single time because we saw this so many times before. The nade's doing work. Tessa slowed down. The spam comes in. This time not fighting on ramp, though. Sitting a little bit further back. Respecting the tease enough to give them a touch of room. But Kenny finds Nico regardless. That is the wall bang. I was hoping it was somewhere hey, else. Where was that? Nico, That's I mean, on B. So Kenny's B, yeah. Okay, okay. Four ups in. Hunter's filled his name in the kill. Oh, it's an element of surprise, but it's still Hunter's frag. Heroic could really decelerate, or G2R oh, just accelerating. Pedal to the metal. Whew, 2v4 with all the nades, all the goodies. Kadian lucky to be alive as the molly's extinguished. There's a world where Stown and Kadian can do this, but it's a very, very rare opportunity. And it would require some missteps from G2 here. There will be flashes. And Kadian in a position where he may be safe from them. There's one. There's a whole lot more coming as well, Alex. Uh -oh. This isn't going to be that magical round that we were hoping. 
see maybe something special. But for now, G2, different posture there as well, sitting a little bit more passive that time rather than actively fighting on the ramp. Yeah, and well, the approach worked just as well as Aminek killing everybody through the smoke. As you can see here on your <laughs> screen, five in a row for G2 as they're looking to close this one up. Take us to map number three. If you take a look at the top right-hand side of your screen, you see Inferno waiting in the wings to be the third and final map of the second series here today. At ESL Pro League on the Counter-Strike Network. Timeout from Heroic. It is their second last and probably will be their last called if they're unable to convert this round here. Lost bonus, well... You know what I'm going to say. It's maxed on out. As long as they keep planting for the next two rounds, they will be able to buy. Now, I don't know what the approach needs to be because G2 are being very, very malleable, as Rush would put it. They're all over the shop here with the aggressive players. They're playing well as a unit. They're not over-rotating. Their utility usage is on point as well. I'd love to see a slower round of Heroic, like a bit of more of a mm. default. See Look if the CTs utility. give them stuff draw out all of that util so that's not all there for the retake but they do just seem to like to go fast Namanek again with the nade timing this time not going to do so much but he can still have a chance this time they've taken down the king of ramp is there going to be a different outcome nades barraging in early advantage taken by heroic but there is so much time left on that clock there is no need to go for anything particularly outrageous here this is when they can play the game they did last time. Very fake heavy, right? Draw them out, string them across the map, go over towards B, try and isolate a jewel, go back towards A, throw some more grenades. So this is uh, the way that Heroic were able to pull themselves back into the match last time they played against. Two are in two. mid. That could set them up for a quick rotate oh, to fast. B. Yeah, and they're going for the all-in. There's nobody home. What a good call. Oh, Nexa, Just does Nexa. he see him? Yeah, over the smoke, he's got a little glimpse. Oh, it's so little. Oh, the flash is good, though. Oh! Bloody hell. Where did Nico and Borob just dig those kills out from? I, they, they were so blind. And then out of nowhere, nah. Good to go. Five alive. Bomb to be planted. Maybe. So this is the time when they actually used Amonex aggression against G2, right? They were able to find that opening. The rotations came in. G2 had to group up and see if they could find the equalizer. But Heroic acted very quickly, and you can see... Just what that did, out of place, G2 rotating in, scrambling to not let them set up post-plant positions. And they were just stripped away, one after the other, or all at the same time, is more what it felt like on that B site. And Hunter doing his very best to hold on to this org. If you take a look at the bank balances on the CT side of things, they do have cash to buy. It's not the end of the world. But every penny is going to count if Heroic continue to post more as we trickle down towards the tail end. The bomb will be going off by up, making some footsteps here. Hunter's going to hear this. Actually... Trying to get out of dodge. Put himself in a bit of an off angle. Spamming his bar up and, well, can Stown get the trade around the corner? He pokes. Good stuff from Hunter to hold on to that org. Does he want to upgrade? No, he'll be holding on to the CT rifle with the scope. And rebuying in now will be that of G2. So it's hard to see how you replicate that if you're heroic. Yes. It's difficult to, to go for that opening kill again and to find a couple of first uh, shots through the smoke as we just saw there. You can't say same again. No, uh, I, I, I don't think that is, is a guarantee. I know it wasn't a guarantee that Amonet got all the kills through the smokes that he did, but remember how this spree of rounds started. It was with that 5-7. That's what was the, the breath of life. Can he always try that wall bang from the elevator room? Oh, 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 hot toes. Oh, that's oh, a big opening. That's a huge opening. Nico caught Nexa off guard on his info jump. And again, the early advantage goes Heroic's way. Two rounds in a row. Let's see if they can convert the second as well. Will we go all the way to 14-14? Tess is set to luck. He'll be walking on up. This is where they can play their mid-round counter-strike. The utility... Not insane, but enough to make an execute possible. Yeah, Cadian's position to throw a, a nade at the moment. He, he's not necessarily holding anything particularly useful, but he is in a position to throw a smoke and a Molotov from that particular corner. I've seen him do it before. Oh, yeah, bees open. What they're waiting on. Smokes. It's of everything being thrown down. All but a ruse, of course. Kenny was pulled out of place, though, but gets a oh, little bang. Ouch. Goodbye, Kenny. Nico, sign seal, deliver that one. And, of course, Amanek, in the meantime, did find a kill. But by now, the bomb should be down. It is, and now they've got a hold. Two from Connector, two from that construction position. It's Jax from the B main entrance. Corrupt's flanking him. Oh, gosh, you're right, yeah. 
Coming Good back timing. from his silly business. Hi, Jax. I know you got your knife out. Oh, oh. <laughs> he hears him running back towards A. Wow, Jax is so lucky. Yeah, he's found a safe haven here. Yeah, they won't even clear this. They wouldn't assume that there was the gap. The porter buoy. God, I'm a child. I don't know when you say it, it's funny. It's just comical. You read it. You were just, it's just funny to hear it on your eardrums. Mm. Now, here comes 14 14, folks. Ooh. What's the money like for CTs they now? They can buy. They can definitely buy. Jax can drop across one. Kenny will be able to buy himself, and Hunter will be able to purchase, and then that will be one of those pistols I was talking about before. Maybe the snapping turtle comes back out for Ammonek over towards the A ramp. But that shot to Kenny, you can see he was in limbo. When they were clearing mid, they were making the call that nobody was home. And normally Stown, when they're doing the B hits, has been lurking middle. On that round, he wasn't. Right? That's the detail. That's probably the difference maker that G2 were looking for right. as they were going on the fact-finding mission. These are the little bits, these are the little nuggets as to why you see teams check. Wow, okay, sorry, that probably was a, in bad stead with... No, not at all, bro, not at all. I, was, I wasn't laughing at the nuggets, I was laughing at the, the simple fact is that it is the smallest margins in Amanek. Surely not going to get away with some more of this nonsense in the front of the smoke. He got three kills in quick succession last time he did this, and Tessa surely has to be prepared for it this time. Second smoke towards the ramp, keeping them contained, keeping the threat... And arm's length. And a Hunter with an org is going to be hard to force off of that line. Good nade into Testus' face. With the smoke being a bit deep, Testus has a lot of info here that nobody's up close, and that was the danger for them when they started to lose the spiral of rounds that got them to this point. And here's the fact-finding mission over towards mid again. So there's no stown here once more. They're going to call it clear, but they're not going to know if it's A or B. <laughs> they go for a two-man flank. Oh, it looks like it. That's very spicy. Could be so valuable. And off we go. Next to descending. Tess is responsible for the flank, I think. Heck no. Same spot as always. Quite an interesting set of circumstances. 35 seconds. Um, and just catches down off guard. That's the first frag of the round, and we're about to see the look. Chaos ensue. Next are on the flank. Nobody's home. He's got the perfect timing on this one. If nobody looks, Cadian might after his smoke. Oh, God. Oh, Nexus has won this round right here, right now with the flank. No trigger discipline needed. He can get them both. Round surely won. Tessus oh. has gone too. Nexa has thread the needle and sewn himself up a 15th round. Ooh. That one got tight. Nexa actually pushed them into overtime in one of their previous Vertigo games with a flank exactly in the same fashion. Denying the plant. This time he didn't need to deny the plant, just gets all three kills. Big timing on that flank, by the way. You saw Testis was on Scaff. He looked away just at the he same time. He just went around the top as well. You're bang on about the time. Oof, 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 oof. Big oof. Yeah, that's frustrating right there as well. Heroic and Chief 2, they've been here many a time before, ladies and gentlemen. They know what it feels to be up against each other in a close affair. And the AKs are out, back towards B. They saunter, Katie with the AWP. No subtlety to this either. Ooh, lots of exchange and utility for information over towards the A ramp side of things. Katie's going to flash himself up. He wants to post up for Kenny, but Kenny's not home this time. He they is rotating heard... back. Kenny was over on ramp, right? They've got to have heard that he was over there hearing the shots, unless they consider maybe a double, but I'm not sure how much track of the economy they're keeping. Well, they bought the respect of G2. The B hits have been a problem. Nico's really mixed up his game and the positions that he's been playing in these mid to late rounds, and they've actually drawn out a huge rotation. So as we take a look, as they now head back over towards A, Kedian's going to pop flash. They can swing on out. Don't need it. Yeah, I, I was kind of sad to see this, the pop flash in his hands. It would have given them a much earlier warning as to the T's location. Pop flash out. Hunter to put a peek on it. Amanek to get a nice little escape. I feel like Hunter was showing him what to line up that smoke with there. Funny. 40 seconds. <laughs> the way Amanek plays this game, yep. he feels like a different breed to, yep. to everyone else. He's a CSGO native, Lauren. This is what we were waiting for, maybe. Jack's showing off already. Stown goes down. I know. And now the T is going to have to re-aggress towards Ramper. Look at the time. We're down to 20 they seconds. Faked them again. It's worked. It's worked so well. 
the fake thrown from Nico. Now puts Hunter oh. in dire straight. His shots are so good, though he can win on his own, and so can Cadian. A one versus, or we'll make it two That's versus four. He needs to be planting. I'm not sure what he's trying uh. to do here. Now time, yeah, okay. now time. Shame. 16 to 14.